Well, hello everyone. Welcome back to, we're going to call this Lizzie's cooking show because I will be back next month as well. Um, so tonight for you, I will be making two different smoothies and two different overnight oats. Um, if you watched my last um, little show that I did last month, you're going to realize I like to prep a lot of things and being on the go, the like type of go person I am, these smoothies and the overnight oats really come in handy. And it's, you don't have to buy very many ingredients to make all four um, ideas. So for the first one, we're going to start out with, it's called a berry by banana smoothie. Um, so you're going to start out with, I took my dad's bullet blender thing. And it's pretty few ingredients. I like to use skim milk. Alternative milk works as well. So what you're going to do, you're going to take measuring cup and you're going to measure out let's see half a cup of milk and with a half a cup of milk and just pour it right on in and then for the buried by banana part obviously it has the word banana in it we're going to take half a banana i gotta find some soap water. I'm just setting up bananas and berries. Okay, cool. We're ready now. We have a knife. So you're going to take one banana, but for this smoothie recipe, I only use half. In my opinion, a banana is extremely overpowering, especially when it's in a smoothie. So I'm just going to go ahead, cut the banana in half, save half of it for later. You'll figure out why. You're gonna go ahead, and I did wash my hands before all of this started, I promise. I all righty, so you're gonna take your banana. We're just gonna chop it up, make it easier to blend. We're gonna take the banana, and we're just gonna plop it right into the cup. Next, I take a fourth of a cup of blueberries. I already have my blueberries prepped out to make it easier. Pour them right in here. And then lastly, I take strawberries. So the blueberries and the strawberries where that berry part comes in. Chop the top off. That's not me. And then I just cut the strawberries into fourths. And I just plop them on in there. So you can use as many strawberries, as many blueberries as you'd like, but I just found that this is kind of like the perfect little ratio. Go ahead and chop all of those up. And I'm using a smaller blender cup, so I might have to add a little bit more milk, but we'll wait and see what happens. So there you have your berry by banana smoothie. The nice thing about smoothies is that you can add in extras if you like. I like to add in protein. My favorite smoothie protein would be this um, Ollie plant protein powder. It's vanilla. I buy it at Target for about $15, which is relatively cheap for protein powder, in my opinion. Otherwise, you can add in flaxseed, chia seed. Um, anything to give it a little extra boost. The spinach is never a bad idea. So we're going to take it in our cup and flip it upside down. It's going to get loud, so bear with me. And I don't really care to have my smoothies more of as an icy, so that's why I like to use a milk base. But within two minutes or so you have a berry by banana smoothie and the nice thing about i like about prep smoothies i like to prep my smoothies so what i do like on a sunday night i chop up my bananas i chop up my strawberries rinse everything off and i just throw it in a freezer bag ziploc baggie so here's one of them that i have prepped out for later and they store good for about four days with the banana, I'm a little hesitant with them. So about four days, these suckers can go in the fridge. They do last longer. 
but that's not my forte. And so then for our next smoothie, this is actually my favorite smoothie. It's a peanut butter banana smoothie. If you know anything about me, you know that I love peanut butter, anything peanut butter. So I kind of just played around with the smoothie one day and it turned out to be pretty doggone good. So for this recipe, instead of using half a cup of milk, we're gonna use a whole cup of milk. So we have one full cup of milk. It might seem like a lot, but it is what it is. Actually, yeah, that'll be, that'll be fine. I use a cup of milk at work. It's fine. So then next, we're going to take half a banana. You can use half a banana. You can use a whole banana. Um, I don't know. Actually, we're going to save that half for the other recipe. And I'm just going to go ahead and use a full banana because, like I said, this is a banana peanut butter. They're both pretty powering flavors. So I'm not saying that they cancel out, but it's not one is going to power over the other. So I'm just going to go ahead and chop this up. Usually when I make this smoothie, I have a big blender. Working at a coffee shop, we have blenders made available to us, specifically a peanut butter blender. So I like to make my drinks there. Um, this is a smoothie that you may be able to prep. I don't know about freezing whole things of peanut butter, but if you ever wanna try that, go for it. That's just not my cup of tea. And so then next, we're going to do two tablespoons of peanut butter. I've chosen natural Jif creamy peanut butter. Um, you can use Skippy. You can use any other, the, any other of the brands. You can also use alternative nut butters like almond butter, nut butter, sunflower butter. Um, any of those you can try. This is going to be really runny. This is runnier than I thought. So we're just gonna go ahead and pour some out without losing all the ingredients. Okay, so we'll try for about half a cup. Usually I add ice in this. Sometimes I don't, sometimes I do. Made this smoothie this morning actually, didn't add ice in it. Um, I guess it's whatever I'm feeling that day and you never know what side of the bed I'm gonna wake up on it. So for this smoothie, I specifically like to add protein powder. Um, what's cool about this is that it comes with like a little scoop. All of them do, but it comes with like a little ring to keep your scoop in it. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a scoop of protein powder into this. Um, chances are I will drink this on my way to work in the morning since I like to commute from my dad's the night before and I do work at 5.30 tomorrow morning. So I'll need something to kind of keep me up and going. So just go ahead and do that. Pop it in, it's gonna get loud again. And in less than 30 seconds, you will have a peanut butter banana smoothie. This one is much creamier than the other one. Um, just due to the peanut butter and the protein powder. Correct me if I'm wrong, but protein powder does thicken up smoothies. So again, feel free to add it in the buried by banana, half a banana, three strawberries, and a fourth of a cup of blueberries, and then the chocolate peanut butter, or the peanut butter banana, a whole banana, two tablespoons of peanut butter, and just some milk. Again, you can use alternative peanut butters. You can use alternative milks, whatever you know, floats your boat. So then for the overnight oats, and all of these recipes will be posted online, by the way. So for the overnight oats, um, this is just a fun and easy way to have a healthy breakfast, but at the same time, make it fun and it's easy access. Um, a can or a jar of overnight oats probably takes me less than five minutes to make. And all you do is pop it in the fridge and you pop it in the microwave the next morning. 
Um, so for the base of overnight oats, my personal base, I like to use a third of a cup of old fashioned oats and half a cup of milk. Again, you can use alternative milk, that's perfectly fine. So here I have a mason jar already filled with a third of a cup of oats. So I have my third a cup of oats and I'm gonna take my milk and I'm gonna add half a cup of milk. And so that is what I would call your base. You can do more milk, you can do less milk, you can do more oats, you can do less oats. It's just whether or not you really like to have your oats thick and creamy or more of like a runnier consistency. So that would be your base for oats. And once you have a base for oats, you can go ahead and throw whatever toppings you'd like, any spices in there that you may, that may trip your trigger. For me, for this jar of oats, I'm gonna go ahead and do the Chunky Monkey that has peanut butter in it. Shocker, because I'm not surprised. And so the Chunky Monkey involves peanut butter, half a banana, some chocolate chips, a little bit of cinnamon, and some vanilla, but I do not have vanilla, so I'm substituting that for honey. Still a great alternative. So I'm gonna use that half banana that I had earlier. I'm gonna go ahead and chop it up. Sounds like the bananas are marching. <laughs> Alrighty, so I have this half a banana. I'm just gonna drop it right and top on the jar. For storing overnight oats, if there's bananas involved, I would say no more than two or three days just because the bananas will brown. For apples, you'll wanna soak them in um, part water, part lemon juice to keep them from browning. So that'll keep apples good for about four days. Any other fruit, you're good to store them up for about a week. So now that we have our bananas added, we're gonna go ahead and just add one tablespoon of peanut butter, more or less for your taste. Again, I am a peanut butter snob, so I just like to load it up. That'll work. And so then instead of vanilla, I have honey. Dad, you're gonna need more honey, by the way, because I think I might use it on the night. Just gonna drizzle some honey in there. Using um, vanilla, you wanna do a tablespoon. Honey, you can do a tablespoon to substitute it. I'm a big, um, I'm just gonna eyeball it and hope for the best kind of person. I get that from my father, but I have had teachers in the past for presentations be like, you need to use right measurements. And it's none of my high school teachers. So if any of you are watching this, don't be offended. This is, this is just what college has done to me. So after that, um, you'll have all of this and the last part of the Chunky Monkey. And if my boyfriend decides to watch this, he's gonna be like, wow, chocolate chips? I'm not surprised because I love chocolate chips. Yeah. So I'm gonna go ahead and I have um, Toll House Semi-Sweet Mini Chocolate Chips. I just got these at Fairway today. Shout out to Fairway for being there for me to get all my ingredients because I waited till last minute to get everything. So I just take a little handful. And I just sprinkle them on in there. And then lastly, you want to take a spoon of some sort and just kind of mix it all up. The peanut butter is going to make it a little bit harder to do. But I just like to mix it all up and make sure everything gets incorporated. So the thing about overnight oats is that you can leave them in the fridge, again, depending on what type of fruit you have in there. But in the morning, you just pop them in the microwave for about a minute to a minute and 30 seconds, and you have overnight oats. If it's microwavable. So Caitlin asked, um, do you microwave it in the jar? My biggest tip is, especially if you're on the go in the morning, you're not gonna have time to pour it out in a bowl get it all set. So what I like to do is I like to find microwavable jars and pop them in there for about a minute or any sort of container. So like a container like this would work for overnight oats. Anything that you can pop in the microwave to make your morning a lot easier because again we are prepping food and when I personally think of meal prep I think of something I can grab on the go that's going to be healthy. It's going to save my wallet a little bit of cash later on down the road. 
So I'm all about what? Oh, I'm all about making life a lot easier because being the on the go person I am, I don't have time to stand around and do that kind of stuff. And being a college student, I have to spend my money wisely. Right, Dad? Okay, cool. So then for the last overnight oats that I'm going to do, this is actually in a pineapple chipotle salsa jar. I got it in the Amanas. Super delicious salsa if you're ever in the Amana colonies area. But again, I have a third of a cup of um, old-fashioned oats. I'm pouring half a cup of skim milk, because that's just my go-to base. Another good base would be um, unsweetened vanilla almond milk. It gives it a little bit more of a sweet taste, gives it a little bit more flavor. So you might not have to add vanilla into it. You can, you can't. So then going back to when I was talking about having fruit left over, the nice part about buying an ingredient that can be used multiple times is something you can use in a smoothie. You can also put in overnight oats. So again, I'm gonna take some strawberries and I'm gonna go ahead and cut the strawberries into fourths. And the thing about it, it's in a jar, so you have more space. So if you wanna use six strawberries, you can use six strawberries. I'm gonna go ahead and just do three strawberries. I do have four in here. I'm just gonna go ahead and cut up three. Because again, the nice thing about buying ingredients I can use more in one dish, ha, huh, blueberry. So this is like a, instead of a buried by a banana, it's just a buried overnight oats. So I just have a little handful of blueberries here, no more than a fourth of a cup. And I just pour them right on in here. Give that a little stir. Go ahead and use my honey again. Agave will work too, it's just again, Whatever your preference is, if there's an alternative, chances are it'll work. So just kind of mix that all up. And then when I make my buried overnight oats, I like to add some cinnamon powder into um, my oats. You can add them into the Chunky Monkey Oats as well. I just feel like it gives it another depth of flavor. Nutmeg is good as well. Um, if you would like to measure out the cinnamon or nutmeg, I would do a teaspoon. Again, I like to eyeball things. Blame my father for that. Um, and so we're just kind of mixing. And it's going to look a little bit runny with the base I use. It'll look a little bit runny, especially in something like this where there's no thickening agent like peanut butter. So it is going to look a little thick, but again, you let it sit in the fridge overnight. You can even let it sit for a few days, depending if you make multiple jars at once. It'll thicken up eventually. Uh, I could, yeah. Is this, I don't, I think that one's my, I don't know. I just grabbed them from your house. Um, so then this will be a little bit more runny because again, it doesn't have a thickening agent in it. If I wanted to thicken it up a little bit, I could put more oats in it. I could put protein powder in it. The same thing with the smoothies is that you can add protein pow powder, um, chia seeds, flax seeds, anything like that into the overnight oats just to give it a little more boost. I like to add protein powder because it fills me up a little bit longer. Working the long shifts each day that I do, it's not like I have time to sit down and eat constantly since I'm on my feet serving people all day. But other than that, that is all I have for you guys tonight. Is there any questions at all? If not, it's cool. Um, all of the recipes will be posted on line when the video is posted. You can unmute yourself or you can type a question in the box. I have a question, Lizzie. Can yeah. we... Um, can you put vegetables in your smoothie? Yes. What kinds? Um, you could do carrots, beets, spinach, 
So sweet potato, you could do sweet potatoes in your smoothie. I know my cousin, Manda, she did spinach for the longest time because her little one is very picky about vegetables, let alone won't eat them at all. So I know she said I could get away with the longest time with doing beets and spinach in smoothies. You can use water base, you can do a milk base. Sometimes I like to use water, sometimes I like to use milk. I guess it just depends what I'm feeling that day. So I say if you were doing a vegetable smoothie of some sort, I would probably, I personally would go water-based, but again, that's personal preference, it's up to you. And I do put smoothies in, or not smoothies, I do put spinach in my smoothies sometimes. Like in this berry one, I've added spinach before and it was good. Kale's another good one to add in there for all of those non-kale eaters like myself. It kind of kills the taste a little bit more. Oatmeal, so like, Old fashioned oats, those can be also added into smoothies. It's just going to give it a little bit more of a grainy texture if you're okay with that. Smoothies? Yeah, I already said that. Yeah, my dad asked if the oats have to sit in the fridge overnight. The answer is yes. I mean, I'm sure they could be left out, but I really, I don't think that would be good. I no, I would let them soak overnight. Yeah. And then the smoothies you can make ahead of time and let sit overnight and then grab and go in the morning. So I guess the smoothies, rather than prepping it all out in the morning, you can make them the night before. And again, that's where making nice little smoothie packs comes in handy because you can just throw the liquid in there, drop it in, blend it. Um, I was professional tonight and used a measuring cup for you guys because I literally just, oh, that looks good. We're just going to go for it. And if it's too thick, oh darn. But again, I don't use a lot of, I, I don't use ice, and if I do, it's not a lot, so chances are it's not going to get too thick. So. Yeah, does anyone have questions at all? Great, great job, great job. Thank I'm going to start. Thank I'll be doing that tomorrow morning. Deal, you'll have to let me know how it goes. Okay, I'll surprise Rick. Ooh, yes, I think he would like the chunky monkey. Okay, I'll, I'll do that. All right, I'll try. <laughs> Deal. <laughs> They're all super good. And that's what I like about buying the fruits and like the veggies kind of all together. It's you can do multiple things with it in different recipes, kind of like when you buy, for me, it's chicken because you can do so much with chicken. So no, that's, and being a college student on a budget, you want to get as much as possible for the least amount. 